me with Rich from What Bike, and you're bringing a very interesting trainer to market. That's right. High tech version, different to your What Bike Classic, and that's the Atom, yeah? That's right, yeah. Tell us, tell us about what the, uh, the key features are on the Atom. Well, if we go back to when we, we started the project two years ago, um, we knew the consumer liked the product, they liked the accuracy of the, of the what bike, they liked the ground analysis of the data, um, but there were some the factors that we needed to, to move forward on. Yeah. One of those being connectivity. Yes. Um, people wanted to connect to platforms such as Swift, uh, Sufferfest and the, and the likes. Um, there was the, um, the noise issue, using air is fantastic, it's a really smooth power curve, but actually it has, has noise with it. Yeah. Um, uh, but what they did like, and, and there was a bit of the, the design was a bit agricultural in terms of, you know, we wanted to move that forward. So what we looked at were those key aspects um, and the connectivity and the, the noise actually coming together. So we took air away um, reluctantly because it's a good way that of doing it. That was kind it. of a feature, wasn't it? Yeah. Because you're pushing yeah. against the air, you can change the air. Yeah, absolutely. Know, resistance and stuff. So yeah. But what the limiting factor with it was that we couldn't get the connectivity side. Yeah, yeah. So we've moved to uh, a natural, natural magnets with a set motor yeah. that, that drives down between two flywheels. So it's always reacting to the pedaling's input or the input that the platform's giving us. So what we actually do in the bike is we still measure the same way, the transmission of the bike is still the same, but the front end, the resistance set is, is different. And as you, as you can listen to yeah, now, there's, so there's no noise. Quiet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm right next to it and there's no noise at all. Yeah, yeah. So that's impressive right yeah. there. Yeah, so in terms of being into the home and for the consumer market, that really makes a massive difference. So you can use that and not disturb the rest of the family uh, when you're doing your, your workout. So what, what kind of segment is this aimed for? Is it like uh, the real keen racer out there that wants to train over the winter? Or is it more, you know, the hobby cyclist? Or yeah. is it more like your spinning bike enthusiast who wants something at home? Yeah, well, we, we've, we've, we've certainly initially gone over after the, the more serious market, the yeah. performance-led market. And yeah. um, that's where our heritage is. Yeah. Um, but really, the bike's for everybody. And yeah. I, you, I, you're bound to, bound to say that, but, but it really is. Yeah. Um, um, but the connectivity allows you to use different platforms. So somebody might use Zwift, which yes. is a bit more just, just for fun. Somebody else might use uh, Subfest or Training Road because they're really following a training program and very much serious about that. Within our own platform, we offer training programs, workouts, and we also offer climbs as well. So okay. there's, there's a whole um, plethora of, of options out there, yeah. um, which means the whole family can use it, so and everyone's going to use it slightly differently. If you do use the internal one, the Watt Bike system, yeah. uh, is there much flexibility on you know, the training programs and you know, what is actually displayed? How much, I mean, I'm not really familiar with your, the architecture yeah. in the Watt Bike technology. Yeah. I know a lot of people will use those add-on apps, but if, if they don't, yeah. um, what, what would you say about the inbuilt system? Yeah, so the way that we're positioning our inbuilt system is if you want to improve your performance, and whether that's just to get, do your first 20 mile ride or your first 100 mile ride or yeah. a multiple day ride, we'll, we'll deliver training programs to suit that. Um, we'll also deliver workouts, so you can just do one-off workouts from anything from 20, 30 minutes up to an hour and, and plus. Um, really where that's, that platform's positioned is all about actually delivering structured intelligent training, training programs for an outcome yeah. um, so we'll partner with events uh, we'll partner around specific uh, demands of, of cycling and, and deliver those training programs and we also still have the polar view in here if we look at the the Watt bike hub we have the uh, into here we have tests you can do your 20 minute test you can do a three minute test uh, you can do a sub max test to get your training zones um, we also have climbs at the moment, we have six climbs that we're launching the product with, um, everything from Amp to Ez to Box Hill. Yes. That's a new feature. Um, That's a new feature yeah. for this bike, yeah. Yeah, and they will automatically load the, the percentage of the climb uh, incline onto, onto, onto the product. Um, we have uh, endurance workouts, um, and we will be always adding more and uh, features into the, into the endurance sessions. We have speed workouts, so more based on leg speed. We have warm-up and cool-downs. Um, and we have Grand Tour challenges uh, to keep things fresh and some hit sessions. Um, we also have training plans uh, built in and we're partnered with events to put the training plans in there. Um, you can just come in and press just ride um, and, and you're off you go, you'll start to ride and, and it's your session, you can just develop that session yourself. One of the key features within here, you can see that we have the, uh, the polar view which is uh, famous to the Watt bike. We also have what we call now the, the pedaling effectiveness score that we mentioned previously. Um, we color code that, uh, green, uh, amber, red. If you're in green, 
you're within 5% of a really good score. If you're amber, you're 5% out, red, you're 10% out. Well, optimal score is 75, anywhere between 70 and 80 is absolutely where you, where you want to be with that um, polar view. Um, we also have uh, gear shifters, so Amy can now demonstrate we can work through the gears, um, and that will give us more resistance, or we can use our leg speed to give us more resistance. We can also go to what we call erg mode, um, and that's just using the top clicker, um, and we can then set the power that we want to sit at, and the, and the bike will hold us that power to, dependent on our leg speed, so we can reduce the leg speed down, it'll clamp on us, we can increase the leg speed, and the, and the, clamp, the resistance will come off, and it will use velocity to generate that power. When we finish the session, it'll go, it loads automatically to our, our hub, uh, our cloud-based system, and that also connects to the likes of Strava and Training Peaks. Now, one thing our viewers are always interested in is the accuracy figures. It's quite easy to test these days because you can put on, let's say, you know, Garmin vectors or something like that, mm. power tap P1 pedals, and you can compare accuracy of the inbuilt system mm. to an external power meter. Mm. What's your what's your view on the accuracy of the Atom? It's a really interesting uh, conversation, which I think is really going to gather some momentum over the next couple of years. Yeah. Remembering that we've been doing this for 10 years now uh, and accuracy was absolutely at the core of what we wanted to, to be part of. When we started uh, work on British Cycling and specifically with Peter Keane who was a performance director there at the time, you know, accuracy and reliability of that accuracy and the granularity of that data was absolutely the core of what we wanted to achieve absolutely. and we still measure in the same way. We yeah. still capture all that data, we still measure at 100 hertz. So, so that's absolutely something that we've led the market on. Since then, there's, there's another 10, 15 manufacturers that have come to the market with it. Um, you, if you go back to first principles of, of measurement, you, first principle of measurement, you can't measure on cranks and you can't measure on pedals. You have to be able to measure the net forces. Um, so, as I say, it's going to gather some momentum. It's something we've stayed relatively quiet about because we're confident in what we deliver. Um, but we are seeing people putting pedals on, on products and doing comparisons. Yeah, it's um, bound to happen. Yeah, but actually, how do they know that product's that's true. So, so yeah so so we 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 uh, statically and dynamically calibrate our bikes yes. um, and we're confident we talk about two percent across the range um, but we do that on purpose because we measure everything from one watt through to up to three thousand watts when we're testing um, the fact is we we're, were well within one percent the whole way but because we take it seriously we're not going to be wishy-washy and say it's one percent the whole time because it could be it could be slightly over that. Uh, They're environmental effects as well, aren't they? I mean, that's the that's the problem with with uh, strain-based power meters. Yeah. The temperature, for example, affects them. Yeah. Um, you can get power meter drift over time. Hence, some require you know recalibration or resetting. Yeah. Very often, but that's not the case with every power meter. No, absolutely not. But yeah. I'm sure with your system, you've already considered that. But does the user have to make any? Um, Power uh, configuration, like no. any resets or any no. any zeros after no. they purchase it. It would, it would do a, it. Do its own uh, zero offset, um, and we it's it's actually calibrated. Yeah. So if, if there was an issue with the calibration for, for a part issue or etc., we will we will then recalibrate the, the product. Yeah. But it doesn't. It's, it's calibrated for life. Well, very interesting product. Look yeah. forward to giving it a, a test. Yeah, good. perhaps now. Yeah, <laughs> jump on. <laughs>